For a lot of business owners right now in June 2020, it's a very challenging time with learning how to pivot, what to pivot, what are the new changes that we need to make, how do we serve our customers better, what new products can we put in front of them. While we're making all of these decisions, we need to be mindful of our brand. In this episode, Jerry Foster, branding strategist, shares with us those key things that we need to be paying attention to and that we need to communicate to our audience while we're pivoting and elevating our brand at the same time. Jerry Foster, ah, this is the second time we've had a podcast together. I really enjoyed our first one. As a matter of fact, we had to re-record that first one. So technically it's our third <laughs> podcast together, but I always walk away feeling very uh, energized with uh, the Jerry Foster vibe and what you convey through the radio waves. So I'm looking forward to what you have to say today. We had, before we started this podcast, we were talking about where a lot of business owners are shifting right now. And in that shift, we need to be mindful of what it's doing to our brands long-term because at the end of the day, that's exactly what we're branding. Building is a brand. That's our asset. Uh, so what kind of insight can you provide business owners that are on both sides of the scale? One is saying, this is a great opportunity. I'm so excited. My business is never doing better. And then that other customer who's saying, I don't know what to do. I, this is not, my business is not thriving during this time and I'm trying to figure it all out. Well, the best advice I would give them is to don't put a mask on your brand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you know, September times are really crazy right now. We know that. And because of COVID-19, social distancing, staying at home as much as possible, regularly washing our hands, wearing a mask every time we leave the house, have all become the new norm, depending upon, of course, where you live in the United States. Now, while those new norms may remain the best strategies for obvious reasons from a health standpoint, and certainly wearing a mask is going to help slow down the spread of COVID-19 and protect us against it. However, putting a mask on your brand is not only a poor strategy, it's a bad idea. And so the best advice that I could say when I say don't put a mask on your brand is don't slow the spread of the amazing, unique value that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. The unique value, well, that's changing for a lot of business owners. I, it's certainly changing for us. We used to be a, a live only event company yeah. Yeah. Uh, and now we're not. So yes. how, how can, you know, what is that lens that we need to look through when it comes to being mindful of that as we do make our shifts? I think the biggest shift is to look at what people are really buying from an owner. They're not buying their services. They're not buying their products. What they're buying, if we want to call these deemed essential, okay, to kind of stay within the vernacular to, that the world is in right now, what is deemed essential to an owner is, okay, what problems can you solve? What incredible results can you produce for your customers? What miracles can you perform? What is that emotional benefit going to be if you're out there making the lives of your customers better? And so I really think, September, that as the world is turned upside down right now, as we all know, spinning all around, every owner listening to this podcast has to understand that your brand has a greater chance of being seen, heard, and purchased if you're looking for what? Unique opportunities to provide unrivaled value in these not normal times. So what that comes down to is don't be too promotional. Well, you had said something to be clear about the problem that you're solving. And I think for a lot of people, we are still solving the same problem. We're just mm -hmm. having to package the delivery of how we're solving that problem a bit differently. Yes. Yeah. Because I think you're right. I, you know, consumers always want to see how your brand can help, how it can provide them some kind of experience that they're looking for. How can your, your brand help a business that may feel that they're, that they are in some kind of forced isolation. And so I think that today, what value someone offers, especially if their budget is tight, 
because of the economic impact all of this has had. We all know about that. So when someone has only so much money to spend and they want to get the biggest bang for the buck, for the, for the buck, I said but, <laughs> for the buck, then they've got to emphasize that they've got something that is relevant to their concerns, which may, September, have more to do with safety, security, assurance, right? So I'm thinking, okay, if you're an owner and you want to package and present something that people can really get excited about, talk about how your brand can help them in terms of feeling safer, more secure, more assured about what it is that they're doing so that they don't feel scared that they may not be in business three months from now. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It's definitely another layer of the pain that we as consumers experience that we look for solutions. But right now you're right as to, um, I don't know if leveraging the fear is the right way to say that because it just doesn't feel right to say it. But I think being mindful of the fear that people are, are facing right now and speak to that with the solution that you provide. Absolutely, because, and I'm not saying that we should be out there trying to capitalize on a crisis. What I'm saying is that this is a golden opportunity for any owner to gain more attention and to stand out more and be remembered more and desired more. If they come at it from the angle that the value that they're offering is designed to not only educate and help them to be better in terms of their own success, but to understand that they as an owner should be thinking about how can they give and not get. See, right now, we've got to have a servant's heart. We've got to be thinking, how can we give to people? So therefore, to your point, the platforms, videos, a strong website, online marketing, all of these tools, social media, all of this becomes important now. But the content of what, they're put, of what people are putting out there should be focused more on helping people, uplifting people, empowering people, giving to people. Don't, look, don't be focused on, I gotta make a sale, I gotta make a sale. Speak more to how you want to add incredible value to someone's life. And, and I'll tell you this, September, that owner has to define what their value is which is another conversation because a lot of owners have not what? Nailed down their own uniqueness. Yes. There's 1.7 billion websites on the World Wide Web. This is a consistent <laughs> conversation that I have with a lot of experts. Know mm -hmm. the problem that you solve. Know yep. who you solve it for. Know why you're the authority to solve that problem. Why are you unique? speaking to that element. It's fundamental. It's at the core of every business. It should be there. And when it's not there, it's like having uh, holes in a, in a bucket and you're leaking yep. out opportunities, relationships, revenue. There's a lot of leaks in that if you don't have that nailed down. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got to drive customer engagement. So if you want to drive customer engagement and increase sales opportunities, then you better offer something that not only your customers value, but it's got to be something that your competition doesn't provide. So therefore, as an owner, they have to get in touch with what? The unique capabilities of their brand. What is it that is being offered by that owner that is not being offered somewhere else? Because at the end of the day, if people don't feel you offer something that is different and better than other choices, then you are now being labeled as a commodity. You know? And that's where, that's where a, lot of, um, a lot of owners fall short. Because if you think about it, September, back in the day before the internet, businesses would differentiate themselves by talking about stuff like, oh, we offer free shipping, 24 seven customer service, the highest quality products, quantity discounts, the more you buy, the more you say, we got a 30 day return policy and on and on and on. But nowadays these types of things are taken for granted. Mm -hmm. So now what are people looking for? They're looking for something that goes beyond what they expect. So my question to our listeners and viewers here is, what are the bare minimum expectations that your customers have? And then look for ways to go beyond that. 
in terms of saying, I've got unique advantages and capabilities that you're not going to get anywhere else. And I think if a, if a business owner doesn't know, an easy way to find out is to simply talk to your customer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Survey them. If you have a Facebook group that you lead, just ask. I'm looking for 10 to 20 or 15 to 20 people that would, that would talk to me for 15 minutes. I'm doing some market research. People love doing that. We do that. We have people that say, oh, yeah, I'm available. Here's my, here's, here's my link. I'll put my, my calendar link in there. And when the 10 appointments are booked, I'm done. And I have my calls and I find out so much information about my product and service and how it's being perceived and what's missing and what they would like to see and what they feel is incredibly valuable and what they feel is unique and how much they would pay for it. I mean, they, they will give you any, they will answer any question that you ask. So oh talk to your customer. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that is so spot on because the input from your customer especially if it's around the owner finding out, okay, what exactly is my uniqueness? What exactly is my value? What, what could I offer that no one else is? Getting that kind of input can mean the difference between standing out or blending in, getting noticed or ignored, or being desired or kicked to the curb. So therefore, they have to make the decision as an owner that they're going to nail down the specific benefit that will make their brand stand out and be chosen when compared to other options in the market. Because in the absence of that, in the absence of not nailing down their own value, they're gonna be forced to, to compete on price. And price is always a preemptive strategy because anybody can beat your price. Remember Circuit City? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. yes yes so, so when i talk about so so when i go back to saying don't social distance your brand don't put a mask on your brand what i'm what i'm also really saying is remove all the stuff that's standing in the way between you and your target customer getting real clear on your brand value and don't dilute your value. Chase excellence so that you don't have to chase money because excellence attracts money. But if someone doesn't really know what their excellence is, which means to your point about doing research, find out what matters to your customers, find out what your co target customers really, really care about, focus on that special thing that you do that your competition doesn't, then it's gonna be very difficult for that owner to thrive during these crazy times. I had a few, brought up a couple, a couple of things that's making me think about a conversation I had with Paul Lindbergh. We did a podcast okay. interview recently. He's gonna be teaching at the upcoming forum as well too. And he talks about price. And uh, he's talking about the five things that you can do to double your business. And one of those items is to increase your price. And so to your point of anybody can beat price, that's not the point. You, you had said that um, uh, uh, quality uh, attracts prosperity. Not yeah. those exact words, but my translation of what you said. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Excellence attracts money, yes. Yes, excellence attracts money. So yeah. if there's this money resistance of, I need to, I, we're saying increase your prices. And if you feel a resistance to that, then there's something inside of you that you need to work on. There's something you need to pay attention to internally and find your coach, find your mentors, find somebody that you can talk to to help you through that period because that's a block that's holding you back because your customer will pay for it. If the quality is there, the results are there, they're the right customer, the messaging is right, they'll pay for what you present to them, especially loyal raving fans. So here's, here's a question I've, I've, I love asking. So I had a conversation with um, Jeffrey Hazlett from C-Suite yesterday. Huh. You know, he's, a mar he's in the marketing arena. He's a marketing expert. And we were talking about marketing and how to position that marketing. What do you do if you're not a wordsmith and you tend to be very lengthy in your explanations? Now, branding and marketing cross each other. Uh -huh. And depending on what agency you talk to, <laughs> it's either a love relationship or a love-hate relationship between <laughs> marketing and branding. So let's cross these two and start looking at, from a branding standpoint, the messaging, the language that you use, the layout of your website, all that stuff ties into the brand and the brand strategy. 
what are some tips that you have when it comes to conveying that uniqueness, not being wordy, but being very clear in that messaging and then translating that messaging into the marketing? Well, first off, the owner has to, that's a great question. The owner has to understand the difference between branding and marketing. The job of branding is to get you known. The job of marketing is to get you found. The job of selling is to get you paid. So get known, like get found, get paid. Now, the three intersect and work together harmoniously. So the branding and the marketing and the sales people have to see themselves as being on the same team. As you know, just like Bernie Dorman has always said, it's all about cooperation, not competition. Now, having said that, the owner has to first make sure that their mindset is, is solid. And what I mean by that, and I really wanna to speak to those September who own a service-based business, because if you're offering any kind of expertise, any kind of skill, talent, ability, or gift to the world, it's hard to compete on, quote, expertise quality alone. And so therefore, what that owner has to understand, and I'm talking to those out there who are solopreneurs, mompreneurs, independent professionals, any kind of service provider, B2B services, B2C, business to consumer, it does not matter. If you've got a skill set, you have to control the narratives. The narrative, excuse me. So if you want to control the narrative, it means that you want to shape perception. And you're not going to be shaping perception by shouting from the rooftops, look at me, notice me, remember me, I've got great skills too. No, you've got to be able to say through your marketing, through your messaging, what sets me apart from others is X. What I do differently is my Y. Unlike others in my field, I do Z. Do you, do you want to know something else about me? You can only get X, Y, or Z from me. I am fearlessly original. I love that. Clarity. Yeah. And that's where it starts. And then you feed that to your marketing people, and their job is to bring that to life. I was having a conversation with uh, Tiffany Largi about this marketing uh, the, along those same lines as well too. And something she said was a great visual for me. She's like, you want to start narrow, narrow. This is my specific niche. Uh -huh. Then you want to go wide when they come into your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And then you want to get back narrow again, meaning I'm bringing in my very specific niche market. When they come in, I can help them with all of these things. But here's the main problem I solve up here that's going to attract. And as I bring them into my ecosystem and then invite them to the other solutions or the other problems that we can solve that's related to that main problem. And then at the bottom of that funnel, you're bringing in your high level clients. These are going to be, perhaps it's a consulting client that pays 50,000 for six months or something like that. But you get back narrow again when it comes to that higher level of your product. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I always, let me tell you how, what I tell people about that. I say, you got to go an inch wide and a mile deep. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Now, yeah. when I say that, that requires, and let's stick with service providers for a second. Okay. The service provider has to nail down what are called their core brand differentiators. What are those things about you in terms of how you service your clients, how you deliver your value? that is truly around your expertise that enables you to pull something off on behalf of your clients around unlike anybody else. So when you start thinking of it from that standpoint, you start wondering, huh, maybe, maybe I could offer some kind of guarantee that nobody else is making. Maybe my uniqueness could revolve around saying I specialize in solving these types of problems, or I specialize, to your point, in working with these types of companies, or I specialize in working with a certain number of clients in a specific industry at one, at one time. Or maybe I specialize in working with companies of a certain size. Or maybe what makes me, what makes my brand rock is that I can really handle certain challenges uh, that those companies are facing as a client. Or maybe it's about your level of service. 
You know, it's amazing, September. I call this the Amazon age that we live in. Mm. And when you yeah, think right. about Amazon, you think Amazon Prime and you think about e-commerce. And did you know that in the e-commerce industry, four to six days delivery is pretty standard? About, <laughs> and then Amazon Prime comes along. And what do they say? 20, 24 to 48 hours, it'll be there. And you're like, whoa. And if you're an Amazon Prime customer, you get free delivery too. Now, what does that do? That immediately attracts more customers towards Amazon. Or I tell people to think about the Ritz Carlton, the gold standards of the Ritz Carlton. There's the Ritz Carlton and there's everybody else. There's nothing wrong with those other great hotels, but there's the Ritz because of their gold standards and how they make sure they service their clientele and their guests unlike no one else. And so to owners out there, ask yourself, what else can I do? What if I did this? What could happen? What if? Think outside the box. Think about how you can differentiate yourself. How, how could you perhaps say that you service your customers with speed, assurance, empathy? Maybe you provide some kind of no hassle experience, but what is it that you do that says, I can pull something off on your behalf unlike no one else in my industry? And, and the moment they start doing that, that's when scaling a business happens. And, and to Paul's point, now your value is established along with the higher prices, perhaps, that you're charging because now you have what's called an elite brand. And as you know, September, that's what I teach, how to create a big brand, top shelf, best in class, an elite brand. Because nowadays, what people want to hear is what is it that I can get from you that I cannot get from anybody else? So not only do they need to, to nail down what are their core differentiators, they need to blend about two or four of them to make their brand unique in a way that no one single differentiator can. Because, yeah. Yeah, because the reality is that a competitor is going to come in and try to take it away, try to nullify it. <sighs> How do you blend? By looking at the three things that you excel at. Okay. The question for so many owners, and, and this, is, this is what I ask people. I, always, I ask them, I say, I say, listen, ask yourself questions like, when do I shine? Mm -hmm. When do I sparkle? When do I radiate? So that you can brand your brilliance. What comes easy to you that is hard to most others? What brings you joy? How can you best serve the world, make a difference? And when people are real clear on their own magnificence, then the ability to convey this through this vessel that we're given called our brand becomes a lot easier. But the reality is that a lot of people don't think like that. They, they want to say, I got great stuff too. <laughs> look at my sparkle, look at my sizzle. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> oh, right. yeah. So identify those differentiators and then you like leverage those points in your languaging and always talk about it. Be consistent, yes. always weave it into the conversation, right? Yes. Yes, yes, and know what your differentiators are, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and people don't even take the time to really, to really even think about this. Like, you know, what exactly is my gift to the world? What, what is it about what I offer that nobody else can receive? Because you've got to be able to say, I know you've been looking for A, B, and C. You've been selling for D, E, and F. Guess what? I've got the A, B, and C you've been looking for. And you want to know what else? You can only get it from me. That's when I tell people in my audiences, put your hand up, put your fist up, and go, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Nice. Excellent. 
Well, that's a good thing to think about as we're pivoting is, is to be mindful of what those key differentiators are as you're making that pivot. You know, what are the gaps that your old model had prior to COVID? Yes. So then, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're right, because, because this is all about mindset, as I was saying earlier. If you broaden your mindset and think strategically and not in terms of tactics, because you know the strategy drives the tactics, you're now willing to look at your business from different points of view. You're now seeing different possibilities, different approaches, different potential outcomes that could, that, that could show up. But that owner out there has to be willing to do what? Ask themselves the tough questions challenge the status quo and get rid of some underlying assumptions they may have about what works and what doesn't work. So don't focus on what and how you might do it a little bit better. Instead, ask, you, ask yourself what concepts right now, specifically from a branding standpoint, would allow me to serve my market better than anybody else that could create new opportunities and new ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. It might lead to better, more efficient ways to scale your business. Yeah. What do you think about um, masterminds, forming masterminds? I love masterminds. I've, been, I've, I've, um, I've had mass. I've been a part of a couple of masterminds in the past. I have my own mastermind group. It's funny you should ask that because I'm going to be uh, starting one up this year. And I really believe that masterminds are a great way for like-minded people to come together with, with a common outcome, but more importantly, to get feedback from people, like-minded, iron shopping, iron, we're all in the same room, contributing to each other. So the key is to make sure that you are in the right circle, that you're in the right group of people. What um, tips or advice, what have you learned about best practices in forming a mastermind? Um, mastermind, uh, are great when people allow us to see what we cannot see. Mm -hmm. You've heard the expression, it's hard to read the label when you're inside the bottle. <laughs> yes. It's hard to see yourself inside the picture frame. Yes. And so a lot of times, what a mastermind, at least in my experience, someone sees something Different. that I didn't see. That oftentimes was a blind spot. And I often define that is the gap between inside reality and outside perception, which means that the way you see yourself may, be, may not be the way that others see you because you may think that you are a chocolate shake and a bag of chips, but someone else <laughs> looks at you and says, at best, you're a glass of water. But you know what, you know, and, and the other thing I would say about this, but mastermind groups are great for empowerment because you have to be willing to say to yourself, I'm not going to be afraid to be different. I'm going to embrace that there are billions of people on the planet. There's lots of competitors. However, not one of them has my fingerprints. Not one of them has my DNA. There's only one me. And so if a mastermind group or a coach or whatever can help me get in touch with what makes me perpetually valuable, rare and special, so I can deviate and not conform, so I can go against the flow and not try to fit in, so I can be distinct because I do not want to be extinct. Hello. <laughs> Now, you know, remember, now I'm the branding evangelist here, okay? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is why I look forward to our, our talks. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I brought up masterminds because relationship is also one of those core components to success, is that the quality of your relationship will equal the quality of your success, that level of success. Yeah. And so if you don't know these answers, create yeah. a mastermind of people that you admire, that you feel have taken steps ahead of you. You've got great relationship with them. You trust that they're going to, they're not going to be a yes ma'am or a yes sir type of person, but they're going to push right. back and they'll challenge you on various things. But then like you're saying, Jerry, they'll point out and they can see you better on the outside looking in. So form that mastermind, put it, how many people do you like to have in a mastermind? Uh, the one I was in had um, 10 people. That seems like a good number. Yes. Yeah. yeah I've been cool. in a couple that are smaller yeah. and they're okay. I think yeah. I prefer them to be a bit more that 10 to 15 mark myself. Yeah. 
Yeah, because, I mean, we get beaten down, and now we've got all these unexpected things happening in the world, and we, we lose our magic. We forget that, hey, I am perpetually rare. Mm -hmm. we, we forget to ask ourselves the key branding questions. What distinguishes me? What am I really good at? What makes me special? What brings me joy? When do I, I excel? How can I best serve the world, right? And so the mastermind group can help you just embrace and inhale that you are designer made. Mm. You are not mass produced like clothing on a sales rack. You are designer made to be known for something special. You have unique value. You are designer made to accomplish something that cannot be stopped by anyone because the strongest weapon on earth is the human soul on fire. And so if that mastermind group can speak to me and tell me, dare to be bold, have an edge, stay in an attitude of faith, stay filled with hope, know that I am a highly differentiated brand that will then lead me to the right customers. It will lead me to live in a life of victory. Can I get an amen? Amen. Mm. That's good. <laughs> but see, but, but see, all of that translates into brand. Not oh, yeah. speaking about, about the person, but it's that also can be said for the brand. Oh yeah, yeah, because, because at the end of the day, you've got to make your brand as attractive and distinctive as possible. And that goes beyond simply having a great logo, a cool looking website and relying upon social media, branding and online marketing. It's not that simple. We know and, that. And even humanize the brand. You know, we, we all want to feel like we're connecting with somebody uh, and not just, a, like you said, a logo or a brand name, but humanize that brand, put some personality into it. Yes, absolutely. That's a core differentiator. That's good that you brought that up. Well, thank you. I've, That's I've, one of the things I teach. Yeah, I teach that. Yeah. Yes, I learned that from you. <laughs> <laughs> because see, once you nail down what your core differentiators are, and you can then blend in two to four of those, mm -hmm. then you can do what through your marketing? Shine a spotlight on them. So that now through your marketing, whatever that is, right? This is how branding and marketing works for all of you who are wondering. Now you're shining a spotlight on the value that you can provide that no one else can so that you show them you can exceed their expectations in a way that nobody else even comes close to doing because you've got benefits and outcomes and lots of juicy, wonderful things that people will fall in love with that will allow you to say, I am the brand of choice. Mm. So questions for some of our members out there or who are tuning in should be questions like asking yourself, hmm, what problems do I solve for my customers? What better outcomes do I produce? What miracles do I perform in the sense that I can turn around or reverse things for someone? Is there some kind of emotional payout that I offer? So ask yourself again, I wonder if, wow, what would happen if you did that? Hmm, great pioneers in the United States were, I wonder if. I was speaking somewhere recently, um, September, and I was telling people about great pioneers in the branding field. I, I went back to Henry Hines with, with Hines, horseradish and pickles and relish and ketchup. And, and uh, in the 1880s, he said, I wonder if I put my products in a glass jar or a glass bottle to show the customer the high quality of our products, I wonder if we would sell more. The McDonald brothers said, I wonder if people would buy our hamburgers, shakes, and fries if they always tasted the same. I wonder if we should call our brand McDonald's. And Howard Schultz, who worked at Starbucks, bought Starbucks, goes to Italy, watches how the Italians made espresso and how they enjoyed espresso at their espresso bars, comes back to America 
with Starbucks that he had purchased when he used to work there. And he asked himself, I wonder if, instead of giving Americans coffee, sugar, and cream, we instead talked about espresso base drinks. And if we differentiated ourselves by telling people we don't just have small, medium, and large, we got what short and tall and grande and dente, and we can't just have coffee. We've got frappuccino and lattes and cappuccino. I wonder if people would exp would support my brand if I just told them about Starbucks. Mm. And that's what we're really looking at here, right? I mean, that's that's what this is all about today being willing to step out onto the thin ice, climb out on the skinny branches, and do something that the world has never heard or seen before. Dare to be different. That's the key. And it's a perfect opportunity for a lot of people to do that. Perfect um, opportunity. Yeah. Don't if you're waiting for the perfect opportunity, this is the <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Don't put a mask on your brand. Beautiful. Well, Jerry, I'm looking forward to you teaching next week, actually, a week from today. You're going to be kicking us off on Wednesday where we're focusing on branding and marketing. And you're going to be talking to us about brand positioning for small business survival. Yes. Um, so people that are in that limbo, this is a perfect time to listen to what Jerry has to say, learn from him. And also Jerry will be available during the mastermind rounds um, daily where you will be selecting the room that you want to go into, have the opportunity to sit in a room with Jerry and ask him anything you want to know about branding. Mm, or anything I, else that you're an expert in, Jerry. <laughs> 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 well, as you know, I've been a part of the CEO Space family now since 2009. All right. So uh, whenever I have an opportunity to serve and to give and to connect, it's always a joy for me. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, we're going to have some fun, too. Excellent. Where can our listeners find out more about you? They can go to my website, jerryfosterbranding.com, uh, Jerry with a G. And uh, I also have a, a very popular podcast called the Big Brand Formula Podcast. You can check that out. Yeah. Big Brand <laughs> Formula Podcast. Woohoo! Yeah. Awesome. From all your popular podcast platforms. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I yes. think I'm still waiting on Pandora or one of them. I don't know. <laughs> oh, for all the platforms. Oh, there's so many places you can syndicate on now. I know. Which is awesome because that's more mediums for marketing, more opportunities to connect with your audience and find the people that you can truly help and contribute to. Jerry, it's been a pleasure. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting me. Take care.